Hi, everybody. I want you to know we're praying for you and we love you and we miss you. You know, when I think about our current pandemic and the things that we are required to do now or requested to do, I think about what James said at the beginning of his, his letter. It says, To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. The idea that he has in that section is that the trials that we go through, the difficult times, are things that will help us grow to be more Christ-like. Perfect is not sinless perfection. It is the idea that we would be complete or have a greater faith, more Christ-like. And during these times of difficulties, this is a good opportunity to become more Christ-like. Something else about the book of James, and those of you who are in Home Builders class know that we've been going through the book of James. And another principle of that book is that it says uh, faith without works is dead. James goes on to say, if you say you have faith, he said, I'll show you my faith by my works. And I believe that the evidence that is there is that it would be this. The true faith takes action. And this is a great time for us to practice some actions as believers in Christ. We are divided, separated right now, not because of persecution like in the book of James, but we are separate from each other. But there's things we can do to help one another and to encourage each other. And I want to just talk a moment about some of those things that I think would be good ideas. Call your fellow believers. There are folks in our congregation who are shut in. They can't get out. You have a church directory. Call them. See how they're doing. Ask them for a prayer request. And then don't just take the request, but pray with them. And then if you would also call the church and let us know what the requests are. A pastoral staff prays for our congregation every Thursday. And sooner, if necessary, we'd like to get those requests out. And then also ask them if there's anything that they need or something that they need assistance with. And if you can't do it yourself, perhaps we can. We want to help those who can't help themselves right now. And then do the same thing for your unbelieving family and friends. Call them. Everybody's in the same boat right now. Our phones work, our technology works, it's a good thing. I have a message to our prime timers. You know, we haven't been together uh, for a month and probably won't be for a couple of months. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully sooner than later we'll be together. I miss our times together at lunch and talking and sharing. And some thoughts to share with you also comes from the book of James. It says there, in chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, it says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. When I think about those ideas, to be quick to hear or swift to hear, we hear all kinds of things each day in our media, on our social media, maybe even people we talk to on the phone. We need to be swift to hear the good news of the Lord. Our Lord, our God is still in, in control. You know that, prime timers, you know that. Children know that, all of us know that. We, we know it in theory, theologically we know it. But we ought to be practicing listening to the word of God. And then we need to be slow to speak. You know, it's easy to put words out there and not gather them back in because you can't. But the idea of being slow to speak has the idea that people just shout their opinions all the time. And I believe we ought to be prayerful before we speak about what we do and what we say and how we act. And the last thing is we ought to be slow to become angry. You know, I've said this before and I believe it's a biblical truth that our anger never produces 
the desired result. Lord, it's, it's easy for us to get angry right now um, for many reasons, and it's not worth it. Our anger will not make us feel better, have a happier life, or be more faithful or more perfect before the Lord. So when you think about those things, all of you prime timers, I hope that uh, we'll be able to see each other again soon. Fellowship around the table together, uh, to share prayer requests and share time. And uh, But I want you to know that if you have something that you need assistance with, a, a trip to the store to pick up something, or um, call us, call me, uh, I'll be glad to help you. And then I want to talk to our kids, our Awana kids and our Sunday school kids and our children's church kids just for a moment. And I want to tell you this. We miss you. Boy, I, I do miss. I know that your teachers in school miss you. I know that some of you kids are going to be doing schoolwork at home. At home. Your teachers would much rather have you in their classroom to be with you than to try to teach you from home. It's harder for them. You need to pray for your teachers. Something else you can do when you're stuck at home is obey your mom and dad. It, it's such a good thing. If you obey, things get along better. And treat your brothers and sisters well. And you know what? Pray. Memorize those Bible verses that you've been working on. You have an Awana book? Go to the next section. Start memorizing the verses and reading the sections and, and uh, sharing with your mom and dad. We like that, and you'll like that. It'll help you. So to so all of you, Sunday school classes, prime timers, and kids. We miss you. We love you. And uh, we're thinking of you. And I hope to say this and see you again soon by face-to-face, -face, but maybe by video. Goodbye.